All right. Welcome back to another episode of Rewiring Health. And I am excited to be joined by Steve Vincent. So thank you, Steve, for joining me. And I'm excited for this conversation. Hey, Kelly. Thank you. Um, and welcome to all your listeners. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a good chat today. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm going to jump right in. And I really, what I love to hear are people's journeys. Like what, yeah. where did you start and what brought you to where you are today? So do you mind sharing what brought you mm. along this path to what you do today? Yeah, uh, everything from the day I was born brought me to here today, right? Like I, I started going really deep within myself probably 15 years ago. Um, uh, you know, I, I got to the stage in life because I mean, we've, we've got four kids, um, you know, and we've got a nice home near the beach and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so I guess one of the, one of the things uh, I, I realized that more things don't actually make you happy. You know, you can get a bigger house, a bigger boat, a bigger car, a, a new pair of shoes that you ladies sort of <laughs> love so much, you know, but yeah. at the end of the day, you get the sugar hit from that. And, and then you look around and you kind of go, well, what now? Do I just need another sugar hit? Um, and, and so I, I, I guess I became quite, um, quite frustrated by that, um, you know, and, and so that, that it was that thing that probably triggered the, the journey of looking within and finding out well, what, what more is there? What am I missing in life? You know, because if, if I, if I reflect on my life, I've had a very nice life and I have a very nice life. I'm a father of four beautiful kids. I, like I said, I live near the beach. Um, I have an envious lifestyle. And yet there was just this little, I don't know, this knocking that's, you know, there's more there. Like you, what, what, what are you doing? Like, are you, are you, why are you not happy? Like it was just this, this whole thing. And, um, you know, and, and then I started to, to look deeper and I, I reconnected with, with the written word. Um, you know, I'd, I'd written poetry in my teens and I'd kind of put that away. I went to an all boys school. So that kind of gets beat out of you being, a, <laughs> being a, like a, a creative type. Right. Of, and, um, you know, and, and I got, I got busy with life. You know, we had four kids under five at one point, you know, and people go, oh, well, that must have been wonderful. No, it was horrible. I only it's, have two and I'm like, yes, it's a yeah, lot. You know, it, it was meals and nappies and kids in car mm -hmm. and kids out of car and da, 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 da. It, yeah. it was just hard work, you know? And, and I, I think it was only after we came through that period that I really started going, okay, well, I've you know, reached some career goals. I'm, I'm a family man. You know, and, but, but where am I in all of this? And, and why do I feel the way I'm feeling? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I guess I realized it's not that stuff on the outside of us that's really important. It's the, the stuff in here. And this is where our power and our freedom comes from. And, you know, and I started to go down the rabbit hole, I guess. Um, yeah. you know, um, COVID was uh, an interesting time for me as well. That, um, you know, like everyone, it caused huge mm -hmm. changes. But what it did, it helped me slow down and really go within and I, I love the my, you mentioned um, my book you know it's got 70 odd poems in it or yeah 70 something poems in it and so in that time that downtime I just well you know when yeah. things came to me I just um I guess punched them out um you know and then collected them and put them in a in a book to publish for people to reflect on their own journey so I guess that's the the roundabout way of it was it was just it was a, a realization a knowing um that like in here is where is where I need to look. And you know, I did an awful lot of personal development stuff. I've done ayahuasca in in, in the Peruvian Amazon, and um, you know, lots of energy healing and 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 things like that to to peel off the layers. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I would love to get to a point, Kelly, where I go, well, here I am now. I've arrived. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> however, uh, one of the realizations in this journey is that. Um, I'm a work in progress and I have to keep working at myself, you know, and I guess when I think about it, well, I mean, we eat every day, we take a shower every day. Why would my personal development be any different, you know? And yet we, we kind of want to do something or one thing and just go, ah, I've arrived. Yeah. Oh, I wish it was so. I wish it was so, but it's <laughs> I not. Think we all do. That's not, that's not the human experience, at least yeah. in my experience, that's not the human experience. Yeah. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It, it really is, you know, I think it's almost like that pursuit of happiness. Like we think like, oh, if I just do this and I'll finally be happy, yeah. or if I just do this, I'll, I'll feel whole. And it really is that constant journey that we take in evolving. Yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, we spend so many of our lives, so many years of our lives in autopilot. And it's, yes. it is a lot of those times, like you, you know, talk about raising your kids and you know, so many people are busy during those times and you're trying to take care of everybody else, but you don't look in and take care of yourself in that moment and it kind of gets lost in the shuffle. So I think it's, it's so relatable to so many people who are going to listen to this and be like, yes, like that's what I'm experiencing. Mm. And I, I find that a lot of times when there's a big dissonance between like your outside world and what you're feeling inside, that's where a lot of that turmoil comes. And yeah. it's almost like that nudge to be like, okay, start figuring yourself out so that there's less of a gap there. Yeah, and- that, that's, a, that's a really interesting point. If I could just um, yeah. interject a little bit there. Absolutely. One of the things I realized in, in all of this process was that I'd put on a whole lot of masks, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah, I'm happy, everything's fine. You know, we'll have a few beers with the buddies and, you know, and, you know, we'll have, a, have friends around and, uh, and everything's fine, but yeah. it wasn't. And it wasn't till, I think it wasn't till I owned that. It wasn't till I... I realized that I had to take responsibility for that and not squash it down and put a mask on. Yeah. But hey, everything's fine. I'm miserable. You know, hey, everything's fine. I'm miserable. Until yeah. I until I was able to language that and go, yeah, I do feel, I do feel crappy. I do feel jealous. I do feel frustrated. I do feel angry with where I am. I do feel um, discontent. Mm-hmm. You know, until I was able to, I, I guess almost have the courage to um and, and the courage and to be okay mm-hmm. to actually use those words i'm not happy yeah i feel angry mm-hmm. i feel jealous mm-hmm. you know until i was i had the courage to actually own that stuff you know it just it just kept kept driving you know driving myself and um you know that's that's a very human thing. And the psychologist, Carl Jung, uh, that, that's part of our shadow self, right? We, and this is what um, Jung did a lot of work on. You know, we have the two selves, the, hey, the bright, shiny side. Look at me, Kelly, look how articulate I am. We can have a really good conversation. Then I'm miserable inside, mm-hmm. you know, because there's, there's part of me, a shadow part. And if I could, uh, to, to imperfectly quote Jung, he said that everyone carries a shadow and the less it is embodied, if I can remember, less it is embodied, um, in the individual's consciousness and the individual's life, the blacker and denser it is. And he said, at all accounts, what was it? It forms unconscious, an unconscious snag thwarting our most well-meant intentions. Mm. You think about yeah. those words, it, it forms Powerful. an unconscious snag mm-hmm. thwarting our most well-meant intentions. My well-meant intentions were I wanted to be really happy. Mm-hmm. But there was a snag there stopping me, right? Mm-hmm. And that was all the stuff in my shadow that I didn't want to look at. You know, I'm petty, I'm jealous, I'm unkind, I'm, I, I'm all of those things. I'm unhappy, you know, I'm discontent. Push yeah. them down because I don't want to look at it because it, it's horrible looking at it. It's horrible to admit that you're discontent and you've got no reason yeah. to, but that's how I feel, you know, and that's until I was able to really, like I said, really own that. I was just like on this hamster wheel of, yeah, I'm happy. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm happy. No, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing you said, and I love that you said this is that I had to have the courage to look inside and realize that this is the true self, because I think so many times people think courage is showing is, is being brave and not showing our emotions and holding it all together and not being, you know, real with ourselves and just going through life. Like sometimes people think that's courageous, but really it is so much more courageous to be open and candid and be like, this is the real me. This is how I'm feeling. And, you know, as even if these emotions are not like, you know, they're kind of almost stigmatized in the world, but this is yeah. what's real. And, and it's so much more courageous to own that. And, and once you bring awareness in that, to that, it stops growing. And now yeah. you can work through that. And that, that's just an amazing part of your, that process to yeah, it, it, becoming a new it, person. It, yeah, it's, it's, I, I found it very liberating. I'll just give you a, a quick example. This probably mm-hmm. happened, oh, I don't know, maybe four and a half or so years ago. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I want to be a nice guy. I want to be a good husband, a good dad, or, you know, a good provider, all those things that society dictates that we are. And, 
I remember distinctly one morning, my wife and I usually have a coffee out by the water and you know, chat about our day and what's coming up and stuff. And she said, oh, how are you feeling? And I went, yeah, I'm pretty good. And then I went, I'm sick of saying that. I said, you know, I, I said, you know what? I, I'm not. I actually feel grumpy. Mm-hmm. Why? I, I don't know. I don't need. I don't need a reason. I just. I, I feel like shit. Just mm-hmm. don't talk to me. And and I mean, it sounds really, um, really weird as a forty-something-year-old man at the time mm-hmm. to not be able to own my stuff. But it, it, it's a lifelong pattern of survival people pleasing etc cetera, etc cetera, that takes ages to unravel and it was it was only in that moment where i was able to go no i feel really crappy mm-hmm. like, i'm maybe okay with expressing and i don't i don't want you to fix me i don't want you to encourage me shut yeah. up i just feel crappy right? um you know and and being able to own that and be okay with that like, like we have said, is is a courageous thing because, you know, she could have taken it in new ways. Well, you're unhappy. Did you want a divorce? Like it could have, mm-hmm. it could have unravelled really, yeah. really, really quickly, right? And mm. I think, I think too that we often fear the consequences of things, and that mm. stops us being honest with ourselves and honest with people around us. Mm-hmm. But it was that moment was a really liberating thing it was like I finally was able to take a mask off I'm, I, I know that sounds really really you know gee man you're really weird like you you, you know you're a good communicator but you don't communicate very well kind of thing yeah. but um, it's it's a lifelong pattern I'm, I know I know I'm not the only one who um, has learned protective behaviors like that Oh, absolutely. Because it's very vulnerable when you say that things are not okay. And it, it, you, it kind of opens up the floodgates of like, okay, now what's going to happen after yeah. this? And you really have to trust the company you're with when you are expressing that. Because again, it's, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily want to be fixed. Like you said, you don't want somebody to come in and swoop you up and make you feel better. It's just, you just want to kind of sit in those emotions and feel them for what they are rather yeah. than suppress them and cover them up and, or escape from them and, and kind of remove yourself from that. And it, it, it is a huge part of that process. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah, I think that's amazing how, you know, you talk about that and, and I, uh, I think so many people can relate to that. And I know I can as a people pleaser too. It's like, you always have to be like, okay, because you're like, well, I don't want to bring everyone's energy down. I I'll just Mm -hmm. kind of, you know, put my needs aside because I don't want to change how other people are feeling, or I don't want to burden somebody with this, or, you know, it's like all those things that we tell ourselves that like, we're, our needs aren't as important as someone else's needs. And that message to ourselves over and over and over again, creates that reality that we're not worthy of being real with ourselves yeah yeah Such it's, a powerful. So much. And as i um as, as i delved more into this um another um really um inspiring author around this is dr david hawkins in his books and um you know i think it was in letting go he um I'm just again trying to he said he said something like there's nothing unique about any of us when it comes to the way we symbolize our emotions and he said everybody secretly i'll get this right everybody secretly harbors the fear that they are dumb ugly unlovable and a failure Mm. and when i I read that i went oh cool i'm not the only one who feels like that one and this is this is a very very learned man like he's very he's the the consciousness scale guy so he's done an md a phd he's done so much work in the field of um, you know our, our emotions and how we show up in the world and, and and so to hear that everybody secretly harbors the fear that they're dumb, unlovable, ugly, um, a failure. Mm-hmm. I just went, oh, wow, it, it is okay to own that because some days I do feel like a failure. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a work in progress every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, I think the other thing too, and I, this was only a, a recent um, revelation for me, is that. We, we often strive, you know, we, we push that stuff down that I'm unlovable, ugly, a failure, da, 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 um, because we want to show the world our best side, right? And um, not our shadow side. And I, I saw a, um, a quote that nature is imperfect and impermanent. And I, just, I, I thought about that. What, is, what does that really mean? And I sent a, sent a picture to my email list, uh, I don't know, six months or so ago, where I actually saw for the first time was we have this bush in our backyard called a Tibishina jasmine and it has these beautiful purple flowers. And when they're in bloom, you just look at that and go, wow, that is magnificent. Nature, you are 
perfect. You are beautiful. And I went, I went up close for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the individual flowers and I went, oh, hang on a minute. That one's got four petals. That's got five. That one's all bent. That one's sort of got one that's a bit of hold and fall. And I went, wow, that's true. Nature is mm-hmm. imperfect. Yeah. And yet what we do as humans, or at least what I've done as a human is I've tried to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And man, that kills me, man. That is that takes so much energy. And so I've I think I've learned a lot from nature that when I try and control things and make them perfect, mm-hmm. I become exhausted and frustrated and all of those sorts of things. And, and, and the reason for that is I go against the natural order. Mm-hmm. You know, nature is imperfect. Nature is impermanent. You know, nature has its seasons. Nature has its night and its day. It's it's dark and it's light, you know, it's summer and it's winter. Yeah. Why are we as humans any different to that? Yet we try and control things so we only see the good side of things. Mm-hmm. You know, so and I, that, yeah, that, that is a, a form of suffering. You know, and yeah. it's the Buddha who said, you know, the, the root cause of all unhappiness is attachment. Mm-hmm. And if we're attached only to the bright, shiny side of us, that's all we want to show. Mm-hmm. man that's really hard to that's a hard act to keep up right yeah oh absolutely I mean perfectionism is ab- absolutely draining and it you know, when you're speaking it just reminded me of a, a podcast I just listened to is Ed Milet and he was talking about comfortable suffering and yeah. this is what so many people do and and it's like when I listen to him like it's so true we just yeah. suffer comfortable you know we have a nice yeah. house we have everything that we need all our needs are taken care of but yet we're we're suffering inside yeah. and and I, I definitely think that perfectionist mindset that we have to be this person that we perceive to be perfect and it's mm. unobtainable. We'll never get there, but yet we keep striving for that. It's, it's absolutely exhausting. And so yeah. I love, I love how you related to nature because we are part of nature and yet we, we dissociate from it in such a way. And it's so unique how we have, I think, you know, because our brain is so, so, so uh, complex that we're able to kind of make it more complicated than it really needs to be. And do you know where some of those subconscious beliefs came from for yourself? Like where have you kind of been able to stem them back at all? Yeah. When, see, I'm the youngest of six. I grew up in a, um, a fairly strict traditional Catholic family. Um, and one, I'm, I'm also an empath, so I feel things deeply. And, um, and I didn't work that out till I was in my forties, right? You know, hello, deep, <laughs> deep dive and self-discovery, yeah. right? Um, uh, if only I'd known this stuff, you know, 30 years ago, it might've been, life might've been a little bit easier. Um, <laughs> at least you did uh, it now I, though, right? Not at 80. Yeah, 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 that's right. And you're never too old, right? You're mm-hmm. never too old to, to really yeah. find who you are, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the, the things I realized is that whether it was by design or whether it was my perception or a combination of those things, I realized that to, to get attention and to get love and to get self-worth, I had to get a certificate or achieve really well because when I did, oh, come here, little boy, aren't you, aren't you wonderful? We're so proud of you, that kind of thing. And so I, I've carried with me this achiever syndrome all my life where if I've, if I achieve something that's I've tied that subconsciously, I've tied that to my Mm self-worth. And so when things are really good, yay, I am worthy. I have high self-worth, but nature is imperfect and impermanent. So what's the opposite of that? When I have times where I haven't achieved or I've missed the mark, what does that mean? My self-worth drops, right? And so life has been very much this kind of roller coaster and, and I would encourage everyone to, to examine, is there some version of that achiever syndrome in your life where you have tied, um, you know, your self-worth to things that you've achieved, you know, and that's, that's such a load of BS, you know, you, you are worthy, I am worthy, whether I get the certificate, the, the pay rise, the promotion, the, the new car, the new house, whatever it is, whether I get that stuff or not, as a a human being, you know, in this, this 3D world experience, I'm, you know, I'm, I am worthy and so are you, you know, and yet so much of my life has been subconsciously, not consciously, but subconsciously on that hamster wheel of that achiever syndrome. Only when I do well, do I feel good about myself and am I worthy? Yeah. That's such an important point to make because either, I know there's so many people that 
relate to that and myself included. And I just realized that too, in the last, I would say, you know, few years of like, oh my gosh, like I kept going for the next big thing, like the next degree, the next, like keep achieving. And it's like, yeah, it just, you never felt whole. And Mm -hmm. you always felt like it was that, that short-term worthiness. And it's, it's a really tough place to be in. Mm -hmm. And when we, you know, I think too, looking back, like in school and I don't know how it is probably very similar in Australia, but it's like, you get a grade and what do they do? They mark what you got wrong and that's it. And like, you know, you're, you did good in class or you didn't do good. You know, even you could be like a passionate writer, but yeah, they could give you a C and then you think you're a bad writer. And it's, it's just, it is feeding into that. So you're, if you already have that at home and then you get it at school and it's like, of course, we are brought up to feel a certain way about our worthiness. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's so crucial. And for our subconscious mind, it, I mean, it dictates 95% of our life, but how did you start changing the dialogue that you have with yourself that you are worthy even without these achievements, without everything in your life? Yeah. A lot of it honestly was through writing poetry. A lot of that shadow stuff and the layers that had, you know, it carried with me came off when I had the courage to write it's pretty raw and you know it's I guess the way I write poetry it's not you know it's very direct masculine kind of as opposed to a nice you know you know know, fluffy flowery kind of thing and um um you know and so in doing that and being okay to to put down in words no I'm not okay I'm not feeling fine um you know and owning that is that was a really important part of the process but I think on a really simple level, and this is something, well, one, journal your feelings, write them down, you know, own them, get them out. That's, I think that's really important. But even peeling back that more, um, I saw a couple of months ago, someone, I can't remember who it was, but uh, it, it really hit me in the gut really strongly. Um, this concept that words are spells. Hmm. I went, hmm. In other words, the words you say to yourself, the words you say out loud, they have an energy, they have a vibration, and they cast a spell hmm. over your life. And so I'd encourage everyone to, to monitor the, the self-talk, mm-hmm. you know, to, um, to, to be, be conscious of and mindful of and aware of what spells are you weaving in your life. Um, you know, when you hear the word spells, you think, ooh, witchcraft, or let go of that you know you're not five years old anymore (laughs) um you know but but words it's a really interesting concept words are spells how are you spelling your life you know and when you think about it it, it's so easy for um you know the egoic part of our mind to you know some uh, something happens and you go i really, really didn't like that and then something else not so great happens and pretty soon you know my life's crappy. God, I hate where I am. This is just terrible. Well, no, just two small things happen. Yet that that narrative of the the negative spell can get a really strong energy of its own. So I, yeah, I, I, and I do this every day. I, I I consciously and probably also subconsciously monitor how I'm spelling my world. And and by spelling, I, I mean creating my world with the words that you know that I use. Because the reality is, we are creators of our reality in every moment through the words we think and the words that we say. And, you know, if my life's crappy, if I'm saying that, well, there's a pretty good chance that's going to come true, right? And it takes no more energy to say my life's great or I'm doing really well than it is to say this sucks. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's the same thing. You've just got to be yeah. aware of it, right? Mm-hmm. It's so true. And I, yeah, I think you just hit the nail on the head, the awareness, because I think yeah. so many people are just not aware of it. And mm-hmm. it's like, you can catch yourself saying like, was it really the worst day ever? Like, was it, you know, like if, when you're saying that, but it's so true that awareness is, is clutch. And I completely agree the power of words. I mean, the power of the words with ourselves and the power of the words between people are powerful and yeah. Can be either the most uplifting or the most damning thing in your life. So it's it's absolutely crucial to choose them wisely. Yeah, you- I have I have another quote from um, Carl mm-hmm. Jung here. He said, "Until you yeah. make the conscious, the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life, and you will call it fate." Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good one. Unconscious That's conscious, good. it will direct your life, and you will call it fate. Mm. Oh, I have this pain or, oh, I'm in this bad situation. I'm fated. I'm just, I can't do anything about it. Well, what is it? Power in here. Mm -hmm. What is that that is actually 
directing your life. It's mm-hmm. not fate. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's a, yeah. Yeah, it, it's almost like uh, it makes it passive. It's kind of like a cop out when we think of it being like fate, like, oh, this was going to happen to me anyway. But like, that's yeah. just a way to like dismiss yourself from taking control of or taking your own power to create a different life. And yeah. such a good quote. It really is because it's so true. And I think so many of, you know, so many people who don't live consciously or are not aware of what they're saying or even aren't even aware of the subconscious mind and its power will will feel like that that this was coming to me regardless of what was going on in my head yeah Yeah. it it takes it takes work too well like i said i think at the start i'd love to just go oh bang i do that and everything is fine it it takes it's a daily effort like a shower like cooking a meal it is it is daily work and i think that's that's one of the things, and I'm guilty of this as well. That's one of the reasons we are so unconscious is that it takes effort, right? It takes mental and emotional effort. And um, it's worth it if you do, but it's so easy to get caught on that hamster wheel of busyness. You know, life is busy. We're bombarded by all sorts of things, social media and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, it it just it takes conscious effort. And, and I'm certainly not perfect at it by any means, but I'm just yeah. conscious of it. And I'm able to, when I see things sort of going off, from where I want them to go, I'm able to pull myself back. Um, sometimes it gets heavy and it's a couple of days after it, but um, at least I I am aware enough to do so. Yeah, I don't think that I, um, that anyone here talking today is really perfect because the truth it's far from the truth, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, it, and it is. It's like no matter how aware of you are of it, you are. There are going to be those things that just happen, and then you're like, "Oh, I'm going back to my old self," and you kind of have yeah. that like freak out moment. And you're like, "Okay, no, this is just the time." And then, but the beauty is that you said you have the tools to get back to mm. that, and and it's, it becomes a habit and. And it is it's so true. And our minds are typically directed towards the negative. So it does take a lot of effort to change that and not just let it go back to its baseline every time. So it's yeah, it's yeah. It's a heavy energy too. Like the negativity yeah. is the energy. And obviously anything heavy is hard to lift, right? So exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Can yeah. do you mind just talking about what do you do on a daily basis so that you can continue to change the dialogue within your head and and change your subconscious mind? Yeah it's really it's this this happened just this morning it's really interesting i i i go and perform poetry at a, a the poetry slams once a month right and i was saying to my wife this morning um, i said oh, no i feel like i don't know i don't know i'm just not i'm just not feeling it mm-hmm. and she said oh why and i said oh, i don't know i just feel a bit heavy and she said how are your morning routines and i went what do you mean mm-hmm. she said well you know and when i when I am conscious enough and not too busy or I, I, <clears throat> I stretch in the morning and I meditate for you know, just five or 10 minutes where I, you know, I sit on a, a meditation cushion, cross my legs and close my eyes and I'll listen to some music or just be still. Mm-hmm. And, and so that stretching stillness is a, in hindsight, is a really, really important part of my practice. And, you know, we were away for a few days um, last week. Um, and I've, I've had a couple of things. So I've been out of routine and I look back and heck, I got away from what worked from it because, and because it creeps up on you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I got away from what works for me. So I, I am quite a, a spiritual kind of guy. So I do, um, I burn my incense or my Palo Santo or, um, you know, I do um, card readings for myself, but it's those, the, the practice of being still um, it for me is is really really big, and I guess I would challenge um, or challenge uh, all your listeners. When was the last time you just sat with you and your thoughts? Mm-hmm. You, you 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 just be for you know yeah. five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes. I, I I would reckon that I could probably count on one hand the number of times mm-hmm. that you perhaps have done that. You know, I know when in the busyness of life. Um, you can get really distracted from you. You look outside of things, but, you know, and, and but I'm not unrealistic enough. You know, we, yes, we have bills to pay. We have work, we, you know, we have clients, we have all those sorts of things, but we can't lose ourselves. I spent 20 years losing, 30 years losing myself mm-hmm. in all of that, you know, and um, yeah, don't wait till you're my age to wake up to that kind of thing, you know? So what, whatever works for you, for me, it, there are several things that work for me journaling writing poetry meditating um walking along the beach 
I also love walking in the forest, you know, just for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, being in nature, grounding, getting my feet on, on the earth. I think that is really, really important. Um, you know, and I think to one of the things to be really careful of is to when someone says, oh, yeah, you've got to do this. Well, I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> and some of that stuff just doesn't work for me. If it works for you, great. So, so try different things. And, and work out what resonates with you. I think, and because when you do that, you're aligning more to your true self, not what someone says you should do. So I've tried a whole heap of things, and you know, I've used them for a couple of months, and then dropped it and move on to something else. But find find what it is for you where you can just be with yourself. Is it waking up 20 minutes earlier and just just sitting there and you think, oh gosh, this is a waste of time? So hang on a minute. Is being with you? Is spending time with you a waste of time? Man, that's a horrible thing to say about yourself, right? Um, no. So if, if, late at night, early in the morning, middle of the day, I don't know if you're, you work in an office building, you know, take your lunch and go and sit under a tree or whatever it might be and just, just be still. Let your thoughts come and go. Um, you know, that, that's a way of getting to know who you are. And you know, that, that whole notion, oh, I don't have time, well, make time. If you haven't got haven't got an hour take half an hour take 10 minutes take five minutes right mm -hmm. you know and my experience is when i don't do that things start to i get the wobbles mm -hmm. <laughs> energetically i get the yeah. wobbles right so you know work out what works for you yeah um, it might be morning it might be in the middle of the day it might be nighttime it might be all three of those i don't know it might be one of them but yes. find what it is for you that you you know that you can do that's low cost no cost mm -hmm. But you are, you just come back to yourself and 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 just even feel your power as a human being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I love that because I completely agree. Like when people say, "Oh, you got to do this, this, and this," and you overwhelm yourself, and then you do nothing, yeah. or it's just not doesn't jive with you, that can really backfire tremendously because then you think, "Oh, self care doesn't work." You know, personal development yeah. doesn't work. It's yeah. so true. You have to find what works for you and in what season of life. And it's always evolving. There may be, you know, yeah. 10 years from now that might look different for you and, and mm. that's okay. And so I love that you brought that point that you can take all these things, but again, you have to make sure that it's, it's working for you and what your needs are and, and learning yourself enough to know that. So that's why I always love to ask people their self-care routine, because maybe for someone who's listening, just heard something like, Oh, I haven't done that. Let me try that. And then it might work tremendously. So thank you for sharing that and what you do. Yeah. And one other, one other thing I would say yeah. is that just watch out for your busy mind telling you that it is a waste of time because you've got this to do this to, you know, when those thoughts will come up, right. You know, you're sitting yeah. here for 10 minutes, 15 minutes and your mind's going, oh, I've got to go, and, you know, I've got to go and pick up the kids, got to get this, got to do that. Da, da, da. Just, just try and let those things go. It's you know, so true. I'll and I love yeah. And I love your perspective of like, is being with yourself a waste of time? Like, because, and I haven't like thought about that way, but it's so true. Like that's what the message you're telling yourself when you don't give yourself that time. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that perspective shift. And it's, especially after we just talked about the power of the words to yourself, like it's mm -hmm. so true with that. Yeah. I love that. Are you not worthy of 10 or 15 minutes to yourself? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, right. what something are you putting over your life if you're not worthy of 10 or 15 minutes just to be just right be. Mm -hmm. it's so true yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and especially now it's like you know when we have 15 minutes like oh let me scroll on my phone it's like that yeah. like you're still keeping your mind going so the yeah. mind mind never has a moment to reflect or or get into a better energy state or be creative mm -hmm. if you don't ever shut it off like that or yeah. or calm it to a place yeah. of that but yeah, that's right. So, so when was the last time? No music, no phone, no TV, no internet. Um, yeah, no social media, and you yeah. were just with yourself or with you with yourself in nature. When was the last time you did that? Yeah, it's so mm. true. And, and I think sometimes, like I noticed this when I started doing this, but it's when you have that quiet time, it's almost like uncomfortable because you're mm. like, I'm so used to like the the norm for me is that I have to be going all the time. So like this feels weird to be just silent yes. or quiet. So like if for anyone who's done that, like that's how it felt for me when I started, I was like, oh, this feels off. Like I should be doing yeah, something. I, I'll right tell now. you, I felt guilty. Yeah. I felt guilty yeah. that I should have been doing something, right? Rather right. than just being with myself. That And mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really big yeah. red flag. Yeah, it, it, it was guilt. Mm -hmm. I should be busy. I should be doing more. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah, totally. I can totally relate to that. And I'm sure so many people can, because it's like, you have so many demands on you. And, and again, if you're a people pleaser perfectionist, like that's what always trumps everything else. So, mm-hmm. so true. One yeah. other thing I just want to ask you about as far as the spiritual side, because I'm, I'm a huge believer in spirituality and I, I just love, you know, the energies and learning more about it and trying to like tap into it myself. How does someone who maybe doesn't really is either skeptical or doesn't really know how to get to their more spiritual side. What's something they can do to kind of start tapping into that for themselves? Being, being still, I'll, I'll go repeat it again, being still yeah. and listening to, listening to the voice in your, the voice in your head, you know, listening, listening to, and one of the difficult things I, I've had is, is discerning between the busy egoic mind, which keeps me in survival mode and that soft, gentle, but, much more powerful and truer heart Mm -hmm. Um, you know if you can get into that heart space and listen to your heart and not in your mind Mm -hmm. if you can if you can be here and work out what what really matters to you you know in those quiet moments that is a moment of power Mm -hmm. Um, you know the we we i believe we we look at spirituality as in bang, I'm going to get a hit by a flash of lightning and everything will be fine. And my experience is not that um, my experience is um, learning about self, shedding those layers of conditioning, the layers of expectation, the layers of how we think we should show up mm-hmm. and being opening the heart space and whatever that, I think too, a big part of that is, is creativity. Now, whatever that means to you, I, I always thought I wasn't overly creative, but well, I'm a writer. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, I'm not very musical, but I now play some drums. So whatever, whatever is cr- creative for you, I think that helps unlocking what it is, whether it's painting, whether it's drawing, whether it's, it's singing, whether it's writing poetry, whether it's writing a story, whether it's, um, you know, getting an instrument and, and tapping something out, whether it's, um, building a sandcastle, what, what, whatever is creative for you is a way to tap into who you really are because the, you know, there are no rules per se of creativity and whatever you create comes from here. Mm-hmm. You know, if you are quiet enough and, and, and comfortable enough with that, it will come from here, not necessarily from here. Um, and so if you can let yourself go to dance, to sing, to, to play, to, you know, to, to walk, to be still, to, to, to write, to draw, to whatever that is, that creativity is a really important part. And I think it's a, a gateway to spirituality. I really yeah. do. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't agree more. And, and that creativity is that higher energy level too. So it's, yeah. you're tapping into that. And, and just, I love how you talked about how it's just literally is just as simple as sitting quietly with yourself to get into that spiritual side, because I, I, I do agree. I think a lot of people think that spirituality has to be like this overarching, like, oh, I, you know, hit the switch. Now I'm in a spiritual land and yes. it's not, yes. it's not that. Yes, yes exactly. Yes. It is that daily life, you know, just allowing ourselves to listen to that inner voice that is kind and gentle and, and caring mm. and not listen to that voice that's telling us everything is wrong with us. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. Just well, love- one, one is powerful. The other keeps you in fear, right? It keeps you frantic 100%. and in fear. Mm-hmm. And, and I think even just, even just the, the practice of, discerning those two is part of a spiritual practice yeah it really is yeah oh I agree yeah absolutely and and it is that that ego and then our our authentic self and the ego is very loud and obnoxious and we hear it a lot but it is so true it's it's that effort to learn and and get stronger at picking up which voice are we listening to on our head because Mm. it often feels like an argument between two voices Mm. you know so yeah, allowing that quieter voice to have a stronger presence is absolutely crucial. Yeah, yeah, and because we all know the the you know the rusty hinge gets the gets the oil, or the, yeah. the kid that screams the loudest gets the the ice cream first, or whatever it is. You know, yeah. that's just and so you know, is your inner child that's screaming at you to hurry up, get get busy, get the work done? Da 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 da. Is yeah. that you know wh- why? Where are you with being able to discern those two? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great analogy too, because again, it just makes it like, it simplifies it. Cause I think sometimes when we're in our heads, like you, you can't process that. And, and so when you think about it as if it were that child and be like, Oh, it's just that kid again. Okay. Like 
you know, yeah. and then it's, it's so true to, to use that analogy. It just, it makes it much more um, palpable. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, totally. And, and, and I think the other thing I would say, mm -hmm. um, Kelly is too, is remember nature is imperfect. I mean, we, so be easy, go easy on yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's progress, not perfection. You know, I mean, it. Mm. Uh, there is a, there has been a war within me for a long time because we are um, encouraged to be disciplined, you know, to show up and be disciplined. And I'm not saying that's not important. You have to do that. But um, you're also a human being that is imperfect. Mm -hmm. And just, just cut yourself some slack occasionally. Mm -hmm. just don't yeah. make sure make sure your slack isn't you know six months long <laughs> kind of thing you know? yes. uh, but yeah but you are imperfect why mm -hmm. because you're part of nature and nature is imperfect mm -hmm. yes that is beautiful and it I love that because especially for anyone who's a perfectionist just hearing that like is so validating because you may have never been told that or you haven't really taken it to heart and to give yourself grace is the be the best gift you can give yourself honestly yeah. and just not feeling going so hard on yourself if you are off one day and and again just like what you said i, I couldn't agree more so thank yeah. you for that and, and and if if you have trouble remembering that go and have a look at a tree mm -hmm. go and have a look at the the knots or you know go and look at a a, a bunch of flowers yeah and, and literally just sit there and stare at them and look at them and 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 that's a nice little me time thing too right you're just look connecting yeah. with nature and going oh yeah that one oh, that petal is all bent isn't it that that mm -hmm. stem is a little bit crooked and but gee it's still beautiful yeah. mm -hmm. you know? oh my gosh it's so true perfect. And That's as beautiful. you're saying that we have a, we have an apple tree in our backyard and we call it our tree of resilience. And if you look at the trunk, it, like the half of the trunk is gone. It's like a C shaped trunk. And this, it's just starting to, to bloom right now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's still alive. But it's so true that if you look at this thing, it's like the raggedy like yeah. apple tree. But when we were building our house, we're like, don't take it down because it's perfect. And it represents like yeah. what we felt we were. And it is so true. It's completely imperfect, but yet it's beautiful. So yeah. I love that example yeah. that you give and, and there's trees everywhere for reminder. Yeah. So no yes. better way to do it than yeah. that. Yeah. Go, go and look at something in nature, right? Something, mm -hmm. something that nature has produced that we haven't, yeah. um, we haven't modified in any way and just, mm -hmm. oh, heck, I didn't really look at, I've, I've never really looked at like that. Oh, there is yeah. that thing and that thing and that thing. Mm -hmm. Touch it, feel it. Connect yeah. with it. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Because it, it's just, it's such a simple thing, but it's so powerful. And I love that. And it's something you can do. And it's something that's all around you for those visual cues to remind yourself of that. So I love that. For, and, and, and if you're religious, well, there's yeah. God there in, in that thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's however. Don't connect with God by that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And for anyone who wanted to connect with you, how can they, how could they find you? And, and just if you want to talk about your book too, as well, just um, what that includes and, and who that's for. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll start with the book <clears throat> called Finding You. You can see the, the subhead there is Poems and Reflections for the Journey into Your Shadow Self. It's available on Amazon, Booktopia, Goodreads, all of those mm -hmm. places that you get it. And the way, the way I wrote the book was I, I wrote my... <clears throat> Um, I wrote my, you can see this is what I intended. You'd have little um, dog ears and, and things. Yeah. So but how I, how I wrote the book, I wrote the poem. Then I wrote my reflections or explaining why I wrote it. And, and one of the reasons for that, poetry can be quite open and ambiguous. And, mm -hmm. and one of the things I find is now, you know, was that really about a tree or is that about the root of all evil, you know, when you're reading a poem? And so I've, yeah. I've given people my reflections on what I, why I wrote that. And then... To help that journey within there's some prompts and some space to write your own reflections and so oh, okay. it's intended as a um, a guide um, not in any particular order but to help you go and find who who you are and where you are and um, you know what really makes you um, makes you 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 know and find that. those different parts so yeah that's yeah. the book you can get that like I said on um, on mm -hmm. all of those um, <clears throat> those um, channels some um, amazon goodreads etc if you want to connect with me you can go to stevevincentonline.com um, you can download one of um, my favorite poems called she'll be okay and that's the story of um, a mum in her a friend of mine in her 70s not finding out that her daughter had P, um, post um, postpartum depression after the birth of one of her children and the realization that 
she was so busy and caught up in her life and the, the kid was always going to be okay because they were very capable mm. and she never saw that and the the heartbreak that that caused her and so the whole the poem tells a story of well she'll be okay you know she, you know she's capable she's okay um you can download that um you know it's a it's a it's a it's a moving real um story of um two people's lives yeah yeah i love that and i love that it's, it's a real person that you wrote that about mm. too that's amazing yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. or, or you can or you can connect with me on instagram steve vincent underscore underscore it's got to be a double underscore mm -hmm. there yeah. great and i'll put the, all that in the show notes too for anyone who's listening so that way it's just easier to connect with you and yeah. thank you so much steve i really love this conversation it's so relatable in so many ways and hopefully for anyone who's listening if you just take a just one thing out of this it, you're gonna have, be setting yourself up for a better life mm -hmm. and trajectory so thank you for sharing your path and sharing all this information for people to kind of take and move into their life. Yeah. Pleasure, Kelly. And just remember you're worth it. You're worth the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. I honestly, that's the biggest thing you can take away is that you are yeah. worth it and, and to yeah. move forward in that way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly.